Hey. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about um, the media and the way the media interprets or depicts countries outside, internationally, and nationally within the country. When you see a media web page or you read a newspaper, if, if anyone's still doing it, um, but let's just say you're looking at a media web page and the web page's title is China Decides La La La. Um, America, America plans to na na na. Um, Russia, Russia, shama shama, A, B, C, D, whatever. Russia wants to do this. Russia's doing this. Ukraine is doing that. Burma wants to la la la. Every time, every time you see a whole country's name, a whole country's name in the beginning of a headline or in a headline at all, know that they're lying through their teeth. It's an outright blatant lie. Think of it this way. Imagine if it was the name of your country, the country that you're in, and people abroad were reading a very incendiary or very hot topic kind of headline about your country and all its, like for example, my country is South Africa. If all of a sudden um, people in China were reading an article and it was titled South Africa uh, sets massive sanctions against China. South Africa sets massive sanctions against China. Is it true? No, it's really not. No, it's really not. You know why? Because it's not South Africa. It is a very small, tiny little party of South Africa that has decided it decided this on behalf of the whole of the rest of South Africa, all the plebs, all of the public, the tax-paying public, all the little people, even though those people are probably completely unaware of what's going on. And this is true for all countries at the moment. The media is not representing us accurately. And this is true in all countries. So whenever you see that, whenever you see one particular country saying they're doing whatever, it's not true. Maybe it is one small part of, of that country. Maybe it's the, the government or whatever, but it's not the whole country. And very, very frequently, it's definitely not the majority. It's that that ruling part. It's that that uh, it, whether it's dictatorial, whether it's democratic, whether it's, uh, I don't know, first world or third world or whatever. There's a very small handful of people that are deciding for that whole country what they're doing. And very frequently, there are no referendums. There are no questions going out to the public like, should we do this or not? Should we go ahead with this or no, 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 that doesn't happen. They just go ahead and decide it. And oh, now everybody's in the boat with us. Everyone's going to get judged for the decisions that we make because we're all lumped into this, this word that is the country name. Know that this is happening everywhere. And the way that you will be judged for being lumped in with your country is the same that is, is exactly the same that that's happening to other people. For example, in Russia at the moment, there are so many Russians that are against this war. There are so many Russians that have been protest, protesting in the streets. Uh, how much, what, what can they do? What more can they do besides screaming and shouting and maybe being online and maybe endangering I don't know, their social profile or, you know, in Russia, it's, it's not, um, hang on. I was saying um, about Russia, I mean, it, it's not easy being in Russia. I mean, those people have been trained for the last two generations, at least, that, you know, what the government says, the government does and you don't question it. Or, you know, hey, maybe there's a knock at the door at night or so 12 12, uh, 12 o'clock at night and somebody disappears. Really? You know, anyone's saying anything. Like, these people are actually really, really brave being out there in the street, actually protesting like that. They are really brave. They're risking quite a lot just doing that. They're probably on a social profile. They're probably on a list. A list somewhere. A red list. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, you do know what I mean. So they're not part of that Russia decides. Russia does this. Russia does that. Really? Really? Yeah, whatever. I think this kind of thing happens to China a lot. Now, I live in China at the moment. But, like, the way that the media portrays China in certain countries is very much the bad guy, very much the big threat, very much the, like, oh, the crouching tiger gonna beat us up one day. Really? Whenever you see China, know that whatever they're assuming or, or whatever action is happening, it's probably from the government. It's not from the masses. It's not from the masses. And very frequently, the masses don't even know what's going on. The masses are being given... <laughs> the masses get a very, very, very portioned view of what's going on. The government decides everything. There's a lot going on that we don't know about. I'm talking about we, I mean me and us, us foreigners with the Chinese people. There's a lot that we don't, we see stuff that's going on in our media here, but we very frequently don't know what's really going on. We will see numbers and we'll see like headlines and stuff, but like we just go, okay, well, you know, so we have a very, very limited access to the entire body of what, knowledge of what's really going on out there. And so when they say China, la, 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 China is doing this in another foreign um, media website, etc., to people of other nations, you have got to know. You have got to know that that's a lie. Because when they say China... They don't mean all of China. They mean the government of China. They mean the, the deciding parties. The rest of China probably doesn't have a clue what's going on. And that's the reality. And I would go ahead and say the same case is the same for many other countries too. When they say Ukraine, when they say Russia, when they say America, when they say Indonesia, whatever, they put the whole country name. They are lying through their teeth. It's the government. It's a certain small party. It has nothing to do with more than 50% of that population. But the way it's worded, you would think it is. It's not. Very frequently, most of those people have no clue about what's going on and what is being decided for them and other countries. This is, this is just a fact. And we have to be aware of this. You have to be aware of this. The reason why is because... A lot, there's a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of manipulation going on to have us against each other, to build us up with these stories about what's going on in other countries so that we butt heads and this can validate fighting against each other or validate a war. This, this happens all the time and you must know that it's going on. You can only take these headlines with a... a a pinch of salt. What am I saying? A pinch of salt. Or, you can't take it seriously. You just can't take it seriously. If the headline says Chinese government decides la la la, okay, fair. That's probably getting closer to the truth. If the headline says Russian government la 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 or Putin la la la, okay, cool, cool, fine. Well, let's work with that. If it says uh, the American government or, uh, I don't know, Obama, well, choose Choose a president that happens to be there these particular years. Fine, whatever. If, if they use that name and if they use the government kind of area, fine, that's working. But if they just use the whole country name, oh my God, alarm bells, red herrings, nah, -uh -uh, something is really off here. Because no, that most of that population, I would say, I'm going to go ahead and say most populations of nations worldwide at the moment are not in a good place, especially post-COVID. Economically, people don't know where they stand. They don't know what they're going to be doing. This is a high area of instability. People are just trying to hold their lives together. They are just trying to hold their lives together. So basically, people at, their, at, at the moment are kind of fighting for their lives. They, they just, I, I think, the dream, a high dream, for most populations at the moment, 
is a sense of normality and stability. That's a high hope, a stable job for most. I mean, is that a thing that the average person can even wish or ask for for these days? Um, to, to, to not be in any kind of particular conflict, to have a roof over your head, to, to have a stable roof over your head that you can count on from one year to the next. These are the things that are not just bothering one nation, but nations worldwide. This is not a time that humanity is doing well. So in any one particular country, they're just worried about the clothes on their back. They're worried about getting through the week, getting through the month, getting through the year. They have no energy, time or wherewithal to be thinking, oh, let's, let's, let's get together and do something about that country over there because we have a, a thing out for you. We don't like you. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're just all trying to survive. They're all trying to just make ends meet and get to the end of the month, get to the end of the year and sense of stability for the kids and so on and so forth, get, get their kids to, to school on time, have a, have a job that keeps rolling through, save up for whatever. That's, that's a high dream for many people at the moment. Say, so though they, you must know, most people on the planet have war or any kind of conflict or any kind of like poking motion, any kind of incendiary poking motion towards another country or any decisions made to, to raise hackles or, or you know, to, to have people on, the, on their guard or on their defensive in any other country, know that this is what most people do not want to even start. They don't want to go there. They don't even want to entertain the thought because they're just trying as hard as they can to hold their own lives together. Why would they want to start to dig at another country? Why would they want to start to even cause problems with any other country? They really, really don't. They're just trying to survive. So if you are reading something that's getting your, your heat up, that's getting your emotions up about the people in another country, read very, very carefully. And if they say the name of the whole country in the headline, immediate red flag, it's a lie. Yes, it's true for one small group, but that is probably an under 10% of the country that's deciding that for the whole country. And this is true for almost all of them. So, uh, yeah. Look before you leap. Don't hate too much. Take a second to think. Take a few seconds. Take a few minutes. Take an hour to think. Okay, who is this good for? What am I meant to be feeling here? Let the, no, take note of your emotions when you're reading a news article. What's it stirring up? So stirring some intense sense of fear? or what, What's it gearing you towards? What, should, what, what is it pushing you towards? What kind of actions do they want you to take? or acquiesce to if you're in line with that statement they're making. Now watch your back with this because the last thing any of us want is to be in a war or to be in a conflict or be on one side where we're attacking a whole bunch of people very similar to us with very, very normal dreams for just a regular life. That would be, to me, that would be the worst thing for me to realize that, that I'm in a battle or a conflict with other people that turn out to be just like me and they are as clueless as I am about what's really going on. We live in an era of ignorance, of perpetuated ignorance. It is ignorance on purpose. It's a kind of dark age. We live in a dark age. This is a dark age. You think, I mean, yes, we have smartphones. Yes, we live in towers. Yes, la la la, whatever, uh, freeways. Oh yeah, good. This is say modern life. No, we're living in a dark age. It's another dark age. So, so just know this before you, you judge a whole group of people for the decisions of a very few.